Hello and welcome to Greater Grace Church. Sorry for this uh, short delay there. We were hoping to use the laptop. The laptop was working fine earlier and now it won't work for some reason with the camera and the, and the, and the sound. So uh, we're back to a phone again. So I hope you can hear me again. Um, welcome to Greater Grace Church service for um, Wednesday night. Um, before we do anything else, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for um, time to be together in your presence, Lord. We just pray for your direction now, for your anointing. We pray for your perfect will. Cover us now, Lord. We pray for your touch on those that need a special touch tonight, Lord. Be with any who are sick and be with any who have family members who are, are suffering at this time, Lord. We want to think of our friends uh, Priscilla and, and, and Christian and, and Paul and Letty at this time. Um, their grandmother was called home to be with the Lord last week and now their uncle Irwin is very sick in hospital. We pray for them, Lord. Be with them, bless them, Lord. Encourage them, Lord. We pray for his family. We pray that you'd give him peace, Lord, for this last season. Just really be with them, Lord, we ask now. Cover and guide, Lord, for each one, we pray. Thank you, Lord. We think of uh, Sarah Winslow as well, our friend, our dear friend in America, Lord. We pray as they take her into the hospital tonight um, with the idea of inducing her for the birth of their child, Lord. We pray that you'd be with her, protect as well, and cover every detail, Lord, of that season. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord, tonight. Thank you, Lord, that we can remember our friends who are around the world. Thank you, Lord, that we can be together in prayer and in praise. And thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord. Uh, we pray that you touch now and anoint these words, anoint these thoughts, uh, and bless us tonight, Lord, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. There's a, a little way from... Uh, Diane and for, from uh, uh, Jim there, blessed to have you there uh, as well. Um, okay, tonight let's look at Luke 21, we'll read verses 7 and 8, uh, and then we'll read another short passage from Matthew as well. Okay, first of all, uh, Luke 21. It says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. Let's look now at Matthew 26. Slightly different story as well, a different um, different season. It was uh, a few days earlier in verse 6 of Matthew 26. It says, Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, they came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. And when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you. But me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached, in the whole world, there shall also this 
that this woman had done be told for a memorial of her. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words. We thank you for uh, our ability to meet together, even if it is over the internet, even if it isn't uh, in the same room. But Lord, we thank you that we can be in the same spirit. We can be in the same uh, body of Christ. We can be in the same kingdom. We worship you now, Lord. We thank you. We want to give you our, our praise tonight. Lord, we trust you. You are in control of everything. And we love you. And we look to you. We ask that you join with us now. Speak to us now. Fill us now. Anoint now, Lord, these words. And use them for your purpose. For your glory's sake. To point people to the risen Saviour. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Uh, these days between uh, Palm Sunday and Easter. This week coming up to the crucifixion. Uh, is a very key time for the body of Christ, for God's people, for believers everywhere. And it's interesting, we look at the events that are recorded happening during that week, and there are quite a lot of these little stories that we find there. Easter was coming, Passover was coming. In these days, there was a lot of preparation being made. Making ready. Making ready for a celebration. Making ready for a memorial. For uh, something to remember. Think about this. The more preparation that goes into something, the more we tend to remember it. You know, we might we might have a very good Tuesday and you think, oh, that was a good day, but, you know, it was a Tuesday. It might be a very good day, but that's fine. There may be not that much preparation went into a Tuesday. But if you have a wedding day, wow, there's a lot more preparation goes into a wedding day. And it's much more memorable. These things are done for, for a memorial, aren't they? They're, they're, there's, a, there's a keepsake from the day. If it's the Olympic Games, wow, how much preparation goes into the Olympic Games? That's different. There's another degree of preparation, again, even more so than, than, uh, than a wedding. Uh, and again, the more preparation that goes into something, the more people remember it, the more memorable it becomes. You know, if we make a sandwich, again, we don't tend to remember every sandwich that we make. But maybe if we bake a very special cake or we cook a very special meal and we put a lot of effort into it, then actually there's more, there's more that we remember about that than just the everyday snack that we have. And this season, Jesus was really preparing for something. He was preparing for Easter, for the crucifixion. And he was preparing for something that would be remembered for all time. These were events that were going to go throughout history. These were events that were going to change history and change people and change everyone's view of who they were and what history means. These were the things that were key. And these were the things that were coming this week. So Jesus asks for his disciples to make preparation for the Passover so that they can celebrate it together. The day was coming. The day was coming when the Passover must be killed. Now there's a, there's a compunction in that, isn't there? There's a modal verb, that there's a must in there. It had to be done. There was no way around it. Oh, poor little lamb. Oh, it's very cute. Oh, can't we keep him? No, actually, if you want to celebrate the Passover, there has to be something 
happen to that lamb, there has to be uh, slaughter for the lamb. The lamb has to be prepared. It has to be roasted with fire. That was what the Passover said. If you read the, the details of it in Exodus 12, we might look at some of the details in a little while. Um, yeah, it had to be roasted with fire. None of it had to be kept until the morning. It had to be done completely. Consumed completely. Pointing to the finished work of Jesus Christ. But there was a day that came when the Passover had to be killed. There's an appointed time for everything. You look actually, let's have a look at, at Exodus 12 for a minute. Uh, verse uh, 6 it says, And ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the month, of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. The whole assembly, everyone together. It's evening time. It's the right time. This is when we go and we get a Passover lamb, a lamb for eight, every household. And together we perform the act. We perform what is needed for this memorial to take place. There's a time there's a time appointed for everything. There's a right time for everything. We read that story also of the anointing at Bethany. And some people say, well, it was Mary of Bethany. And in some of the Gospels that suggests that. Other people say, well, she's not named. We don't know who it was. It was just a woman in Bethany. But whoever it was, it's recorded, the story. And you think, well, yeah, well, what does that have to do with the Passover lamb? Well, in some ways, there was an appointed time for that to happen also. She came. That was the last time that she would see the Lord Jesus Christ alive before his crucifixion. That was the last contact that she would have with him before he went to the cross. This was the time that God had appointed for her to do that. Precious work, a, a, an act of love. An act of preparation. An act that, that said, this is the, the anointed one. This is the Messiah. She anointed his head. And that is quite key here, that actually he was, he was anointed with this precious ointment from the alabaster box, anointed on the head. Now in other Gospels, it talks about the feet as well. But here, it tells us it was his head, a full anointing, just like it was for the priests, just like it was for the kings. This is, the, this is a, a very key thing. But the Messiah is the anointed one. And there's no clearer message here of Mary being told to say, this is who I believe that Jesus is. This is the, the, the precious one. This is the one who was to come. This is the fulfillment of prophecy. And by my actions, the Spirit of God has told me to do this. Now think about this. It wasn't very popular was it? It didn't go down very well. You know uh, as, as, as things go down. It was a bit of a lead balloon. I don't know whether we've ever done something like that. Where we think oh this will be a great idea. I'll do this. And then you know everyone's reaction is. Well, why are you doing that? How can you do that? She did it as an act of love. But she also did it in an act, uh, as an act of obedience to the Spirit of God. Because this is what God had told her to do. Now, funnily enough, here the uh, disciples were very displeased. Now, again, most of the time we know from the story a 
accounts that Judas is the first one to complain. But here, actually, it says that all the disciples were complaining. What happened there? Judas said, well, you know, I don't think this is right. Uh, think about the money. Think about the monetary side of things. I don't think that's right. now. And then what happened is he went to somebody else and said that. And before long, all of the disciples said, well, we all agree this is, a, this is the wrong thing to do. It could have been sold. It could have been given to the poor. Think of all the good things that it could have been done with this uh, ointment. But you know what? God had a purpose. And God had a perfect plan here. And it wasn't about uh, the poor. It wasn't about other people. It wasn't about uh, any of these, these other things. It was about Jesus Christ. It was about the Messiah. And it was about preparation for the cross. That's what this was, was pointing to. That Jesus Christ was going to the cross. Wow. Now... Often we can be tempted to say, well, you know what? I don't think what that person's doing is right. And I don't think they've gone about doing it the right way. And I think that, that I wouldn't have done it that way. And th th there's a temptation for us all to say, hey, you know, that's not the way I would do it. And sometimes if we are really spiritual about it, we can find a verse and say, well, that's not the way the Bible tells us to do things. But actually, you know what? We're not there to judge another man's sermon. We're not there to look at anyone else's calling. And Jesus says about this woman, she says, no, actually, this was done as a good work. She's done a good work to me. I'm not interested in what other ways could have been done, what you would have done with the ointment if you'd had it. The point is, you didn't have it, Judas. It wasn't yours to do anything with. So don't actually complain about what she did with it. If you go on to go out and buy that ointment, you can do with it what you like. But actually, this was something that God gave to her. And she used it for God's glory. And she used it to glorify the Savior. And she used it to point to the Messiah. And this was a beautiful thing. And Jesus actually commends her for that and says, no, she did a great thing. It was the right time. This was the appointed time for this anointing. Not late, any later, it wouldn't have been any appropriate. And any earlier, it wouldn't have worked. But this was the right time for this to happen. And it, it was done as a memorial to her and to her obedience that wherever the gospel is preached this will be mentioned wow that's a beautiful thing that's a beautiful thing isn't it that that actually we could do something for the lord that people would talk about for all time we could do that you know think about that john wesley did things for the lord that we're still talking about today uh, Martin Luther did things for the Lord that we are still talking about today. Hudson Taylor did things for the Lord that we're still talking about today. Many people. Amy Carmichael. Whoever it is. Martin Luther King. People who did things for the Lord that actually are still talked about today. You know that we have that opportunity. Obedience to our calling. Despite what anyone else says. That's a beautiful thing. Stay faithful to what God calls us to do despite what other people say. Gladys Aylward was told not to go to China. But she said, no, this is my calling and this is what God wants me to do and I'm going to do it. And she did it. And we still talk about Gladys Aylward today. <laughs> and we still talk about this woman today. It was a memorial to her. And it, it was the right thing to do, and it was the right time to do it. You know, uh, Jesus said, 
This was done for my burial. Well, Jesus, you, I mean, you're not even sick. Jesus, you, you're not really that old. Jesus, what, uh, are, is, is there something wrong with you? Is there something that we don't know? Why would you be doing this for your burial now? 33 years old, you know, you know, there doesn't seem to be any call for that. Jesus says, no, this is the right time for this. And she has done this for my burial. Now, again, uh, from the, the point of view of other people, it doesn't make any sense. But to Jesus, it makes sense. In the plan of God, it makes sense. And to the woman who was moved by God's spirit to do this, it made perfect sense. Maybe other people will not understand us sometimes. Maybe people, other people will complain. Even speak against us. This woman got a lot of criticism for this. But it was the right thing to do. And it was the right time to do it. And a memorial for her was set up in scripture. Sometimes the right time comes. And we don't know that it's there. Sometimes that we don't realize what things are, are going ahead. Even now, today, when we see what is going on in the world with coronavirus, um, there's a chance that we may be very close to the end times. There's a chance that actually now, the way things are, the whole world could come under one government very easily because of this crisis. The, there's also the chance that actually everybody could be given a... a an injection told that this is the cure, this is a, a vaccine against it. You know, we could all be given a, a, a microchip or, a, or something like that. These are, these are interesting times that we live in. We don't know how close we are. Or it might not be. It might be one of the pestilences that are mentioned in the end times. And we may still have a few more years to go before the Antichrist is revealed but the way things have moved very quickly we don't really know the times and the seasons yet things can suddenly come upon us that we don't realize the burial of Jesus well that's a long way off he's a young man he's fit he's healthy you know he's just come to Jerusalem he's just had a lot of success didn't you just see everybody waving and shouting Hosanna a few days ago isn't this the, the best time of his life but it could also be the appointed time. It could also be the time for his burial soon. And maybe it's revealed to some people. And maybe some people understand it. And they are the, the ones that discern it. And they are also the ones that act upon it. And God says, you know what? What you've done is will be remembered. The time came. The appointed time for the Passover lamb to be killed. We read that. He asked John and Peter to go and do it. To prepare, to make ready for the feast that they were going to have. You know... Passover also, it says in Exodus 12, verse 14, This day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an ordinance forever. Wow. An appointed feast, an appointed time, and a memorial day. 
This feast of Passover has been kept for thousands of years. Mary uh, shared with us on the on the uh, church conversation the other day that that message from Pastor Boyce. It's an amazing message, and you get the chance to to listen to it about the Passover and the meanings of all of the the parts of the Passover and how they all point to the Lord Jesus Christ and the four cups that are there. And one thing that he said was that this Passover is the oldest surviving uh, ceremony of worship. It's been carried out for thousands of years. This year, there's a chance that some of the of the Orthodox Jews will not be able to celebrate Passover because of what's gone on. The commandment was to 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 remember it forever. You know, it, it, again, it, a good sign of the end times is when things that have been marked forever start coming to an end. This day shall be unto you for a memorial. Remember what God did for your nation. Remember how God delivered you. You know, the plagues of Egypt, the death of the firstborn, bringing you out from slavery. For the believer, a picture of release from sin. A reminder that actually one day we gave our heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and we were delivered from sin. And that was for all time. And that's something we should remember we should have as a memorial in our lives forever. And many of us do maybe remember the, the day we got saved, the day we were baptized, or the day we made a commitment to the Lord. That, those times are enshrined in our memory. And sometimes we go back and say, this was the day, this is so many years today that this happened to me, and I was a changed person. And keeping a memorial of these things forever is a beautiful thing. Think about the Passover for a minute as well. It says in verse 7 of Exodus 12, And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Think about it for a moment. The blood on the doorposts, they would take hyssop. Hyssop is a plant that has a, a bushy head to it, like a brush. And they would sprinkle it. They would uh, um, hit it against the doorpost, strike the doorposts, and the blood would be applied. Oh, this is down today, Patrick. Um, and uh, you know, just think of that. The Lord Jesus Christ. He was the door of the sheep. That's what he says. Remember that? John 10, uh, verse 7. I am the door of the sheep. That's, uh, that's who he identified as. He was the way in. He is the way in for each one of us. He is the way in uh, for, for all of mankind. He's the one that has that heart to say, No, I, give down, I lay down my life. I give it for you. And I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the door of the sheep. The sheep, my flock, uh, Israel, the precious ones, gather in, this is the way in. The blood on the doorpost for Passover was a way of keeping the angel of death out. But Jesus Christ, as the door of the sheep, was a way of bringing the church in. Death defeated. Victory over death 
in both of these. The door in for us. The door out for the children of Israel. They were set free. They were taken. Calvary was about the door being opened. The door being thrown wide open. As the time came for the Lamb to be, be slain. A lamb without blemish, a lamb of the first year. Also, there's the time it says there. Back to uh, Luke chapter 22. It says in, in verse 19, And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and brake it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Again, the time was right. Jesus had his faithful disciples together and he said, no, I'm going to set up a memorial. No, I haven't gone to the cross yet. You won't fully understand it all yet. But when I do, it will become real. When I do, this memorial that I'm telling you beforehand will become meaningful in a way that you would never understood it before. The time is come. The time is here for a memorial to be set up. For a memorial for, for God's people. For the church. The Lord Jesus Christ was doing something that, that, that the whole of creation was pointing to. This is the pivotal act of history. This is the moment when everything makes sense and becomes real. And just as the woman had a memorial for her, the Passover was a memorial for, for the Jews. So Jesus says, this do in memory of me. Now, on Sunday, Easter Sunday, we will endeavour to take communion. We will endeavour to mark that feast. Maybe be ready on Sunday morning, have your bread and your little cup, whatever it is, juice, um, uh, ready. And we will take communion together. That's a beautiful thing. That will be a special time. For us, we can't be physically together, but we can still be in unity and we can still mark the memorial. So let's always lift up Jesus Christ. Let's be ready as we see these days approaching, as we see the time ready for things to be put in place. Let's be obedient. Let's be sensitive to the spirit of God for what he calls us to do. The actions he calls us to take. Good Friday. The plan is we'll have a, a message online in in the morning, um, maybe about ten thirty. Let's let's meet together. Let's go live again, and then after that, hopefully, let's have a conversation where we can all join and contribute. I'm going to try and do a video call. It worked for me today. Um, I'm hoping it'll work again. Um, we can never rely on technology because uh, you know it's a fallen world and I think there's also a, a big attack uh, against Christian unity at this time uh, by you know this technological technological age is not set up by the kingdom of God God creates the natural world <laughs> but you know what we make use of technology where we can and at times like this we have to make use of it so let's be a people who join together. Let's be a people who praise God. And let's be a people who recognize the memorials that God sets up in our lives. The momentous times. The times when actually we know this is what God is going to do. He's going to do a special thing. I'm really convinced. I said it at the beginning of the year. I think that 2020 could be one of the greatest years for us as believers. Maybe a year in which we are called to act in ways that we never thought we would before. A year in which maybe everything is going to change and everything has changed. But you know, God is powerful. God is mighty. 
I was speaking to Dave on the phone just before we started, and so he said, you know, oh, you know, I don't know who's in control. I said, well, God is still in control. That's the thing. Never forget that. Don't lose sight of it. Uh, our God is still in control. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We just worship you. We thank you, Lord, that you're the God who sets up memorials in our lives and an appointed time for the right thing to happen. We think of Calvary this coming weekend and we think of how it was the appointed time, the fullness of time, the right time, the perfect time, your time to do something incredible for mankind, to heal lives, to forgive lives to change lives and Lord we pray now if there's anyone here who is watching out there we don't know who is connected if there's anyone here who has never trusted their life into the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ Lord we ask that this will be their day when they say Lord I know I need you as a saviour I know I need to be rescued from my sin I know that I'm a weak. I know that I can't do it alone. But I trust that you are the God who has a perfect plan at the perfect time and that you can make things perfect. And I trust you and I desire you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, God bless.